In my daily vlogs this week, I've been sort of messing about with apps on the, um, don't know where it is, hang on. Apps on the phone, mapping apps, off-road maps, offline and maps. The phone's got GPS, but the screen's quite small. So, it's got to a point now where um, I'm wondering what to do with the Range Rover. It, yes, it's our everyday car, but I want to go a bit further with it. As we sort of spoke about in that Q&A with Sam, he's wanting to do a bit more overlanding with his L322. We live in France, tracks are aplenty. Um, I've, I've still got to look at the legalities of wild camping, this, that and the other. But, obviously we're going to start off small and we're going to do it on a budget. <laughs> Certain things I'm going to try and sell that we don't need anymore. The first one being um, the Apple CarPlay screen. The Hobbit does not like driving the car with this on the dashboard. I suppose because she's a bit shorter. <laughs> It's in her line of sight. Yes, it is very good. It works on iOS and Android. And also, with the Invery Bluetooth, it works, the phone works through the audio system in the car rather than the speakers. This, this is wireless from your phone to this, but it's not Bluetooth to the car. The Range Rover won't accept that anyway. The only, the only Bluetooth on the Range Rover is for the telephone. That's why we plug one of these into the iPod socket in the cubby box. That then enables you to um, have Bluetooth streaming music. Now, all my music that I own digitally is on a USB stick. And if you've got one of these Range Rovers, you'll know that that um, USB stick in the cubby box works fine. I think I've got 128 gig card and I've got every single bit of music I own on that stick and it plays through the car flawlessly. So, as it does with, with the Invery, that also works pretty good. Um, all the steering wheel controls work and everything with that. But at the end of the day, if I've got all my music on the USB stick, why am I streaming it from my phone to the car? Um, so basically, I freed up a lot of space on my phone through not having to have all the music sat on there. So I can use it for other things. Now the other thing that I am thinking of, I'm, I've got obviously I've moved my phone mount up into onto the top vent and we'll see how that works. Now I've only got an iPhone SE 2020. The screen's not massive, it's not huge. Um, but it, it's, it's big enough, you can see what you're doing. I could use my iPad as our navigating aid, but it's Wi-Fi only. So the plan is to sell some bits off of the car that we know it's no good for us. We've got hold of them and we've tried them out. Yes, they work. So this is up for grabs. I will probably sell it as a bundle with the Invery thing. Um, who knows what it's worth. Um, they're about £100 or £95 and they're about $75 at the moment. So as a bundle I'll sell that. If you're interested let me know. Obviously there's going to be shipping added on to the top of that. Another item I'm going to be selling is the iCarsoft. Uh, I've got that many diagnostic tools. I've got the gap tool for the Range Rover, which is absolutely perfect. I've got the launch scanner. Um, this is the iCarsoft LR version 2. I shall get it out of the thing. There you go. In as new condition. Um, it is updated to the latest firmware and everything works on it. It's all perfect. Uh, there are, I have done videos on this, and it's got everything, the instructions and all that lot in there. Anyone that's interested in that, give us a shout and uh, we'll see what we can do, if we can come up with a price. All these items I'm going to be sticking on Le Bon Quan as well, which is a, 
uh, a website here in France where you can sell stuff like that. Um, I've got my old dash cam, but nobody's going to really want that anymore. So I'll probably just stick that on Le Bon Quan for. It comes with a hard wiring kit, 40, 50 euros. See what happens. Who knows? So the plan is everything that I sell that was on the car is going to go back into the car. So I'm going to try using the phone as the GPS to start with. If I find that screen is too small, I'll then get a GPS um, device to use with my iPad. Now, Garmin do a one called the Glow 2. Bloody wind today, it's rattling these roofs. Yeah, Garmin do one called the Glow 2, which works brilliantly with the iPad. Um, so, Osman Maps is all offline. So once it's on your iPad, it, it's on there, and you can plan all your routes, and you can down uh, in, import GPX files, all that kind of thing. Uh, and then eventually, I'd like to um, get hold of some rock sliders for the sides and some underbody protection. So those side tubes, or take them off, clean them up, they'll be up for sale. Uh, and then I've got to work out what I'm going to be doing in the boot area. Obviously. Being in the wheelchair is a bit awkward over landing. I'm just sitting here looking at the Range Rover now thinking how good it looks. <laughs> um, storage is going to be an issue because the wheelchair has got to go in the car somewhere. Can't put it up on the roof because the Hobbit will have to lift it up there. Um, I'm thinking of building up like a, something in the boot area that we can slide the wheelchair into it underneath and then have sort of storage on top where we can put boxes and bits and pieces. I mean, the idea at the moment is we're just going to be going off-roading for a day, taking a picnic with us, taking the dogs, stopping off somewhere nice and scenic, having a spot of lunch and uh, driving home again. Obviously, once the Hobbit's finished all her treatment and she's back on form again, back to work, earning some money, um, we can then think about going further afield, camping and stuff like that. But then that opens another can of worms, doesn't it? Camping. Camping in a wheelchair. Roof tents are all the rage. But then a ground tent is going to be just as good for us, uh, if not better. I've been looking at these Oz tents that you just pull over. You erect them in 30 seconds. Thousand pound for a bloody tent! Jesus, I was thinking of popping up to Cathlon and picking one up for like 50 quid. A Kuecha, or whatever they're called. I think that's their brand up there. I think that's what, hang on. <coughs> oh no, these are Artengos. <laughs> but they do Kuecha shoes. I think that's how you pronounce it. So all their bits and pieces are Kuecha. And um, oh yeah, 50 quid on the tent, that's good enough, isn't it? Surely, bloody hell. Don't want to be camping in massively adverse conditions. We're not camping in the winter. Of course, then you've got things like sleeping bags, something to sleep on, it's whether it's some roll-up mattress. I don't want an air mattress because they are just bloody awful. Uh, I'd rather just have like a camping mat on the floor. Um, now, when we had the TD6, we was going to convert that, take, up, take the rear seats out and then have like a bed in the back Dogs can all just chuck on the bed, sit on the, you know, cover the bed up while we're travelling. But then you're very limited as to what else you can carry in the car, which was hence the roof rack idea. Everything could have gone on the roof. I'm going to try and steer away from the roof rack uh, idea. Obviously, you're putting a lot more height on the car. Not that there's going to be height restrictions wherever we go. There might be, but I wouldn't have thought so. Um... I think a Defender might be a bit a, a bit taller than the Range Rover, especially when they've got roof racks and tents and God knows what on the roof. So if they can do it, we can do it. What might be a plan is for a project for the future, when we're feeling a bit more flush, is building sort of like an off-road camping trailer. Now, I can build a trailer and tow it behind the car as long as the gross weight of the trailer doesn't go above 500 kilos. It doesn't have to be registered. Uh, and then it's 500 to 750. I'd think it's got to be registered because our twin axle trailer is 750. 750 onwards, the trailer has to be registered and braked. It's got to have a brake system on it. Uh, so if I could keep a little trailer with off-road wheels on it, 
uh, we've all kitted out at 500 kilos, I can just put the registration plate of the car on the trailer. That would give us a bit more leeway for storage space. These are all just ideas going through my head at the moment. I'm getting quite keen on overlanding. You don't see many people overlanding with the Range Rover. Obviously there's overlanding 4WD or forward. I don't know how you pronounce it. I think that's what Sam said, overlanding forward. Um, he's obviously got his L322 and he's no expense spared, whatever, he's putting the best of everything. We're doing the opposite, we're doing the budget. So when it comes to like all these ARB compressors and this, that and the other, the Hobbit's got a little compressor. I'm going to see if it's enough to pump these tyres up. If it is, I'll just get a cheap inverter. <laughs> Airline, I've got my tyre gauge. Job's a bloody carrot, isn't it? Um, yeah, obviously there's going to be certain things. We've got a, uh, a call box, a plug-in call box, which does a really good job. It's quite big, and I don't know how much room it would take up in the back of the car, but it's something we've already got and something we can use. It's got a, we've got a 12 volt outlet in the boot, so plug it in, bish bash bosh, you've got cold food, or fresh food. Um, we've got a camp stove with a propane bottle. Um, you know, we're not going to be going out spending on unnecessary stuff that we've already got. So clean up the camp stove, that'll be perfect. We've got a whistly kettle, got to have a kettle because the Hobbit's got to have a coffee. Then it just, it's just things like water containers and stuff like that. Um, and I say, I'm just gonna try and keep stuff off of the roof. Not only that, I can't find a roof rack that I like. I really like the genuine Land Rover ones, which are not available anywhere. Uh, there is a company in America, I think called Voyager Racks, that make one for the Range Rover, that is almost similar to the, the Land Rover version. But then, they're quite expensive and then you've got shipping to France and then you're going to have import tax. It's expensive. Uh, if it did come to it and we needed to, I might see about making something ourselves. I don't know what they're made out of. Oh, the wind's just blowing a load of dust through the bloody garage. Um, it's so an option later on down the line. Um, but I don't. I want to keep everything off the roof if possible. So that's why we're sort of looking at the off-road trailer thing. But if we can get all our camping gear and the wheelchair in the boot and enough provisions for a few days away camping, it's ideal. Obviously there's a lot to think about overlanding when you're in a wheelchair and you've got to think about if you get stuck. Uh, yes, I'll have the Hobbit with me, but I can't get out and do stuff. So planning routes is gonna be you know, you have to be a bit selective about where you're going to go. If you look at a trail and it's like, oh, that's moderate to difficult, uh, unless you're with a group that are willing to pull you out if you need to, then you don't go down that route, do you? We could fit a winch on the front. There is some nice winch uh, kits for the front of the uh, L322. Um, the main thing I would want to get is underbody protection. They do... Uh, I can't remember the name of the website. If I can remember it, I'll put it across the thing. They do a engine guard and a transmission as well. Um, whether it would be necessary or not, I don't know, but it would be a bit of peace of mind for me. Because I think this, the gearbox sump is plastic. You've only got to have a rock or a branch come flying up and puncture a hole in it. And what, you might not realise your gearbox has got no oil in it until the car stops. <laughs> so that would be something if we was to take slightly more extreme tracks. I mean, we're in France, we've got the Pyrenees, we've got the Alps, we've got the Central Massif, um, the Dordogne, even in the Haut Vienne here, although it's sort of rolling countryside, but there's a lot of tracks, forest tracks. Uh, there is a lot of off-roading to be had and I want to take advantage of it. That's what these cars are all about. Um, you know, and that's why I'm going to be selling all this stuff. Now, with this Apple CarPlay screen, I'll, Sam's obviously done his whole hedge unit. Um, I just put this on as a cheap option. I mean, that 
whole setup there with the Inverif. I think the Inverif thing at the time was about 85 euros and the screen was about 95 pound. His head unit was about 600 pound, I think, looking at the link on his thing. Now I've been looking at some touch screen ones that you replace, the, it's like a 12 inch touch screen across the, you take your head unit out and you replace it with that one and you can replace the air conditioning switches with a LC uh, touch screen as well. And I thought, oh, that would make the car look really modern. Now I've been thinking about this for a good couple of weeks now and I've, I do this all the time, I think of something, I thought, oh, well, I'll do a video on that and then people put the video out before I do and I was like, oh, well they beat me to it. The Range Rover, all the buttons and controls were designed for you to be able to operate with winter gloves on. So you, even the touch screen, well you can't do that on an iPad, on an iPhone or uh, anything like that, or a touch screen, the fancy ones that you can retrofit in these cars. And I thought, why, it's, it's, it's not a backwards step, it would make the car look more modern. But I'm quite happy with the way all that's set up. Nice big chunky buttons, you can turn them even with gloves on, press the buttons, touch the screen. Not that I drive it with gloves on, um, it never really gets that cold here. We've got a heated steering wheel, you pop that on and you get toasty fingers. So, and that was like 1200 uh, euros for the, the top screen and the bottom screen. And I thought, yes, it does look very nice, but at the end of the day, this is a 13 year old car. On the way, it's still fairly low mileage, it's well looked after apart from the paint on the roof, which I'm not that happy about, but I can't really do much about that. Um, I don't want to bring it all up to date to 2020, 2023 spec, so we're going to stick with what we got, have the iPhone or the iPad on the thing for navigation, and uh, yeah, start selling some of these bits off. So if anyone wants any of these bits, just get in touch with me. And, uh, oh, we've got a dog here. Don't knock the tripod, girl. Go on over there. And every bit of every bit we sell, we'll put back into the car for our little excursions. So that's my plan. Um, it might take a while, all coming into fruition, but uh, we'll get there in the end. And then once the Hobbit's better, she stood behind the camera. Hello. <laughs> uh, you know, and if she gets back to work and that, we'll be able to afford to do a bit more. But until then, it's local lanes. <coughs> local lanes and picnics don't forget the picnic every french person stops their bloody car in the, on the side of the road and has a picnic even on the bloody not motorways but like route nationales they if there's a lay by they'll pull over set their little table up and have a picnic so uh, yeah that's our plan <laughs> right that's gonna be it for this video so if you want any of these bits, let me know and uh, we'll sort some prices out and ship in and bits and pieces. Uh, I've got some other stuff here. If anyone wants it, I've got the heads up display that I had in the car. If anyone wants that, let me know. Uh, if not, I, all those bits I'll be trying to sell on either Facebook Marketplace or Le Bon Quan, so. Right, that's it for this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.